Just look at it. Oh my god, it's huge. What the Hello guys and welcome back to Ocean Explorers. Today I wanted to talk about a magnificent fish which definitely deserves a video of its own. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining Ocean Explorers today in exploring the world of oarfish. Ever seen an oarfish? The fish that predicts earthquakes? The doomsday fish? No? Well, neither did many of us. And that's because they very rarely come to the surface of the water. They hardly ever appear. And mostly they're either injured, dying, or if we listen to the most spiritual of us, assigned to spread a message. About all of the legends and myths surrounding oarfish, as well as scientists' take on their biology, we're going to talk in today's video. And if you only heard of them as earthquake predictors, bet you had no idea about number four. Spoiler alert, they've got some sort of superpowers similar to what lizards can do. But before we get started, I would very much appreciate you hitting those like and subscribe buttons. We spent a while reviewing a lot of websites, research and specialty literature before putting up this video and your support means a lot to our team. It keeps us going. All right, let's begin. The story of oarfish, the so-called doomsday fish. The thing about oarfish is we don't know much about them. There's actually so little knowledge about the family Regalacidae which basically means emperor of the sea, that they're almost mythical creatures. All research we checked for this video emphasize that oarfish are very rare and largely unknown. And that's often the number one reason why people make up stories and legends. What we do know is that they exist for sure. They are spectacular creatures of the ocean that live in the deep sea, but for mostly unknown reasons, they sometimes come to the surface. What's spectacular about them? Well, to begin with, their length. Just look at it. Oh my god, it's huge. What the? The first distinctive feature is the fact that they can reach up to 8 meters long. That's over 26 feet long. They're some of the largest bony fish on earth and can weigh up to 300 kilograms. That's more than 600 pounds. No wonder sailors thought they saw mermaids if one of these creatures appeared out of nowhere. They have an eye-catching shiny silver color with red hues and even have their own hairstyle. Plus, they their tail has its own secret that I'm going to unveil later on, so stay with me. So their existence is not questionable. What is raising questions is what makes them special. They're not the only giant fish, there's tons of fish with deep sea gigantism. So what makes us call them doomsday fish? Why are they known as Jugunotsukai in the Japanese mythology? which basically means messenger from the sea god's palace. Why are they doomed to carry the title of omens of earthquakes? Well, the stories appeared at the same time with several natural disasters in the history of Japan and the rest of the world. In February 2010, a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake struck Chile and triggered a tsunami around the Pacific, as well as aftershocks that lasted several weeks. Well, the thing is, Japanese fishermen reported they found dozens of oarfish at the surface at around the same time. Not long after, Japan was struck again by the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami in March 2011, this time with a 9.1 magnitude. Surprisingly, oarfish seemed to predict this as well, because about 20 specimens were found on the beaches from the area. Coincidence? Premonition? What is the explanation? This uncertainty led to plenty of legends and myths about oarfish, especially in Japan, Greece and Korea. Suppositions and assumptions aside, seismology specialists explain that deep sea fish, such as oarfish, live very close to the bottom of the sea, and therefore their sensitivity to any movement in the active faults is highly developed, so they might sense it a lot sooner than those from the surface of the water. Where do oarfish live? Oarfish are mostly found in the depths of the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Ocean, so they're pretty spread around the globe, but they stay well hidden at up to 1000 meters under the water until something makes them come up. Now, not knowing much about these somehow mythological fish doesn't mean we don't know anything. Although they are found rarely, those who were found allowed scientists to study their anatomy, biology and aspect and draw some conclusions that tell us a few things. Firstly, most of the fish that found their way up did it because they were damaged in one way or another. Some were injured 
Some were already dead, but researchers state that many of them were heavily parasitized. They were covered in juvenile worms and larvae, which further suggests deep sea creatures such as the shortfin mako shark, which is the host of the tapeworm, are amongst their predators. Scientists have successfully performed artificial insemination from a pair of oarfish that died very soon after being found in 2019. From that procedure, 18 days later, the eggs hatched, but they didn't feed and didn't survive for more than 4 days, so no more observations were possible on their development. What do oarfish eat? The fact that scientists were able to take a closer look at oarfish bodies allowed them to understand their diet as well. So there are three species of oarfish over the globe, but they are pretty much similar. They have no scales and no teeth. They are what we call filter feeders, which means they mainly feed on small invertebrates. Oarfish eat zooplankton, crustaceans, jellyfish and larval fish. In his book on the anatomy and physiology of oarfish, Dr. Tyson R. Roberts, an American ichthyologist dedicated to the study of oarfish, adds that some of the specimens he studied had their elementary tracts empty, whereas others were filled by thousands of North Pacific krill. His conclusion was that oarfish feed almost exclusively on krill, these small crustaceans looking like shrimp belonging to the Euphaceidae family. What can oarfish do? First unusual fact about them is that they can swim vertically. While it is possible to see oarfish swimming like normal fish, they usually swim with their heads up and tails down. And if that's not spooky enough, wait until you hear what they can do with their tail. So about that superpower I was telling you in the beginning, oarfish have the capacity to autotomize. What that means is that they have an ability to self-amputate, pretty much like lizards. So if you see a short oarfish like this one, it's because he performs self-amputation. Holy can you imagine a fish this long giving up on that much of itself? According to Dr. Robert's research, all oarfish have autotomized and previously had longer bodies. Why? That's not yet very clear, but it's suggested that it's not for self-preservation purposes like in lizards, but rather as a natural metamorphosis in their evolution. And what's really intriguing about them is that for some unknown reason, they sometimes strand themselves on beaches or rocks and very often in pairs, which suggests some sort of shinju. It's a Japanese term, look it up if you don't know what it means. And now, the actual dilemma regarding oarfish. Do they, or do they not, predict an earthquake? Oarfish as omen of earthquakes make an undoubtedly intriguing story. We love hearing of supernatural signs and divine intervention. However, researchers can find tons of other explanations that are more rational and logical. One of the actual reasons why oarfish come to the surface is that, just like other deep sea creatures, they swim vertically at night to follow krill, their favorite food. And sometimes, there are some shifts in currents that carry them away preventing their return into the depths. Other explanations can easily be found in climate change, pollution, or some sort of disease that causes oarfish to migrate in an unusual manner. So in the end, we all love a good story to terrify us on a spooky night, especially if it's with deep sea creatures, future predictions and disasters. But it's just stories. There is yet so much to learn about oarfish before making any claim about them, leave alone predicting future catastrophes. There's very little research about them, specifically because they appear so rarely. And so, just because we don't know much about it, doesn't mean we should surround it with scary stories. Leave that poor fish alone. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.